we were discussing about statistical functions and we had discussed till rank and percent at rank so now we will see how to do randomization randomization with the help of rand and rand between so so it is time to talk uh, about some of our favorite functions in excel the rand and rand between functions so these are essentially random number generators and they work in slightly different ways the first is the rand function and when you write it you literally just open and close the uh, parenthesis without anything in given between just like you see here okay. there are a, okay there are a few functions in excel like today and now which will cover the date in time section here you write it this way there is there is actually no components of the formula besides the formula name itself so in what the not need formula. to write anything between the parentheses yes yes okay and what the rand function does is it returns a random number between 0 and 1 <coughs> it returns a random number between 0 and 1 out to 1 billion 15 di uh, di digits wait one second So it is similar, and the rand between is similar, except that you can specify the range that you want to determine, and it will and it will re return whole numbers between your range. So if I wrote a rand between zero comma one hundred, and filled out this, uh, uh, like once again. so the ran between return uh, in the ran between we will give the range uh, the starting and the end range here is 0 to 100 and it will return whole numbers between that range so if i had written ran between 0,100 and i filled out this array from uh, uh, a1 uh, from a1 to 36 here is an example i'll uh, if you are get, getting confused don't worry we will see an ex example properly so from uh, 1 to 36 of which i might see keep in mind these are volatile functions meaning that they will recalculate or read randomize with any workbook change so just be aware i'm going to jump into just a blank excel workbook to really quickly show you what this look like in so let us jump to the blank one so cell a1 here in the cell a1 so me it will take a note as well jab so so equal rand <coughs> so you can see the definition of this function that is it returns a random number greater than equal to Zero and less than one evenly distributed. 
So just I uh, will do rand and open closed parenthesis. Will give. And I'm go. I'm gonna see and drag out it over. See. So it has given me a random number from zero to one. If I have not specified anything, it will just take a one. So if I just drag this one. So it is just creating the random numbers here, nothing else. Which is equal to zero and less than one, right? Yes, yes. So it has created a ra random numbers between zero and one. So if you just drag still more since it has to adjust to these cells it will uh, try to take the numbers from the pre previous cells okay so see before it was 0 0.4 something now it has uh, reduced to 0 0.02 because all the numbers has to be less than one and if i go to for formulas tab could calculate uh now if I go to formula tab and give oh, where is the calculating options here we have consistently change so this see if you just uh, give recalculate I mean calculate sheet it will go on consistently changing so from 0 to 1, it goes on changing the values. Now why I will just change instead of rand. Now I will give rand between. And let me say, just say 0 to 100 instead of rand between. I will give rand, instead of rand, I will give rand between. And in the parenthesis, I will give the range from 0 to 100. And then close the parenthesis and let's apply that. So you can see it has generated a random number between that. So if I uh, click on this, you can see it, uh, it, it, is, it is keep on generating the ra random number from 0 to 100 like this to the same range you see that I am dealing with a similar random number generator except in this case all my numbers are whole numbers between 0 and 1 I mean 0 and 100 so there you go to you so there you got two examples of ra random number generators in excel using rand and rand between okay rand it will just uh functions return a random value between zero and one but rand between it will return a whole number value from the range which you have given okay so the next uh, topic Okay. 
so the next topic is some product So let, let us quickly cover a formula here called some product and what the product formula does is it will multiply co corresponding cells from multiple arrays and return the sum of the products. So we'll see an example for this also. That pro probably sounds like complete gibberish. So it is like it is a little co complicated to describe in words, but realistically, it is not that bad once you understand the, what it is doing. So first, the syntax is actually quite simple. You just list out the arrays that you want to take the sum product. Typically, these are entire <coughs> columns. Note that all your uh, arrays have to have the same dimensions here. But to but take a look at an uh, example uh, let's say i have got a very simple data set here just three products uh, along with so we have the uh, products that is apple ba banana orange so these are only three products so we have quantities and price if i to take the total revenue for all my data all my products i could grow by row and say calculate the re revenue for apples two times 50 cents so we'll see an example if you're not understanding now don't worry so revenue yeah, for so, I, I have this main concern that what we have to write under the parenthesis are you understanding yeah it? Yeah, yeah i'll i'll tell you yeah so revenue for bananas is four times the dollar oranges like four times the dollar one so the oranges is three times the dollar as 0 0.80 so it has to multiply this and then give the sum product like we need the total value right so per quantity the price is 50 i mean 0 0.50 dollar for two quantity it will become dollar one so first it has to multiply these things, these two columns, then it has to give us the sum of the product. So this is the a product that is multiplying two different uh, range of cells. Then it has to sum the product. So in this example, see how we have to give. Uh, so B2 to B4, the range we have to give this uh, array one is the column. So from B2 to B4, this is one column. And the array 2 is from C2 to C4. Here you can see. So if you just give those two columns and you, and you have to give the range also. If you have given the uh, as many as co columns you will give, it will multiply those things and it will give the sum. So we'll see an example here. Don't worry. Uh, So it does the same thing in just one step. So if I take the sum product of co column B quantity and column C price, it's doing the exact same prices. So ca calculating products row by row and then summing the results to get the same value. So, so some, some product is often used with the filters. So it is often used with the filter so that was a simple example but sometimes you might want to say take the sum product but only in cases where this column takes on a certain value to do that you can just replace your array reference with the uh, what to say the uh, array reference followed by an equal sign uh, so you want to see uh, there, there is one condition when the cell value from a2 to a17 is short only then you want to multiply and then give the sum of the product 
so the sum of the product is always used is often used with the filters to calculate products only for the rows that meet certain criteria so in this case i want a filter where column a only equals shaws and you can write it just like the normal formula the only difference in this is a weird little nuance with excel is that if you don't have a filter you separate your rays with commas so if you do have a filter you separate your uh, concern with the multiplication signs and you can add as many filters as you want so here in this last example filtering or taking some product only where column equals shaws and column uh, equal apple b equals apple only at, at that time you want to mul multiply and give a sum of the product so let's see one example and here we have a pro tip also when you add filters to a sum product you need to change the commas to multiplication signs so we'll see that also don't worry So one kind of peek under the hood to un understand how it really working is to compare how you see the uh, this thing here. So So in any time you have a filter here, it's essentially a lo logical test. Okay. So when I say A2 to A17 equals shows that gets uh, translated on the back and into series of zero. And into series of zeros. So, so see here. So, so what you see is like this uh, here. But what Excel sees like this. It will give one one for the uh, shows. So it will wherever it will see shows, it will give one. This is what Excel sees. Okay. See. I'll tell you what it will do. Where we have mentioned the condition here. Wherever shaws is there and wherever apple is there, we want to multiply those things and give a product. We, we want to know only total revenue for shaws and apple. So shaws is the store name and apple is the pro product name. So we are seeing like is, is like this. But what Excel sees? It will see as it will consider shaws and apple as one one and and it will write zero in place of other um, uh, what characters so what it will say the pro product is one quantity is two so price is 50 cents so wherever excel sees one it will multiply these things so this is the condition these two is the condition if these are true then it will execute these things so it, it is as if statement so in the if statement we, we we were having comma but here we have the multiplication sign so if if these conditions if these criteria are met successfully then it will execute this so that, then it will multiply these two columns here it will see oh we have one in b so in in the b2 call in the b2 cell so we have uh, it has to multiply co column c into uh, column d okay then it will come to third row here it will see oh the store has one so it it, it has to multiply the column c and co column d then it will see zero zero oh both are not one I 
either of the co columns should be one here both of them also not one so it will skip here here also it will skip here also it will skip and here it will see oh both are one so it has to multiply here also uh, if either of them is one it will ma multiply these two uh, columns so this is the sum pro product okay so this was the very simple ex example what we saw in the first this is the very simple example but uh, in a real time like um, if you want to see what is the total what is the uh, annual income of a person or of a uh, employee if you want to calculate for the a particular designation for maybe system engineer or, or maybe pro project ma manager so at, at that time you can put a criteria like this so from a to to a, a i can a change the words right what i can change the words now so uh, regard if the designation is there so i'll write designation uh, respective designation. yeah here you yeah this uh, what, what type of designation you are interested with if you want pro project ma manager you can give here and uh, the here you can give the department whether it is uh, it or hr or it is management then you, you then you can give the steps to execute on what uh, co column you, you want to ma multiply you can give here so if these two I, either of these two conditions are met then it will ma multiply those two products and it will give the sum of that okay so this is what the sum product so we'll see a demo for this a quick demo so we will go to the sum product tab so let's take a few minutes to talk a little bit more about this mysterious sum product function because uh, i know that some of us about you know, like uh, maybe like uh, I, even though we have uh, gi given the enough explanation, we have discussed much, but still it is good to ha have a demo. So in this totally okay, like totally normal. So I yes. felt the exact same uh, way when I first started le learning this function because it really is not one of the, the more intuitive function that Excel has to offer. So what I would like to do here is actually practice an example in the Excel environment so that we can understand it better. So exactly what's going on behind the scenes and get a sense of how some, some product can be used in some real world context. So if you open up uh, this uh, some pro product tab, if you open up uh, your uh, uh, section for uh, statistical and if you go to this some product tab, we have... Um, something called Well, this is an ex example of something called a transportation matrix. And in this particular case, we are looking at four different factories, Bo uh, Boston, New York, and Chicago, and uh, Oakland, and four distribution centers, uh, uh, May, this Miami, Dallas, Seattle, 
Baltimore. And the idea here is that we are shipping products from our factories to our distribution centers where they can then be mailed out to our customers. And this should look pretty familiar uh, for them. So th this is the same matrix that, that we used for our optimization demo. So in this case, we are going to keep things a little bit more simple, but the same way to apply. So basically, we have two pieces of information here in our transportation matrix. So uh, those are uh, in, the, in the top matrix, we have got shipping cost per unit. So that tells us how much that does it cost to ship a unit from each factory to each distribution center. So as you can see, it's a very cheap to ship between cities that, that are closing distance or proximity. So only about four, $4 from, uh, Boston to, from Boston to Baltimore. So this is, is in close pro proximity. So from the Boston to the Baltimore, it is only $4. Dollars, but whereas from Boston to Seattle it is thirty dollars, from Boston to Dallas it is seventeen dollars. This is shipping cost per you uh, unit. So from Boston to Miami it is fifteen dollars. So under two dollars from New York City to uh, Baltimore. So this is I feel Baltimore is in very near uh, proximity for Bo Boston. Uh, New York and Chicago, whereas for Oakland, the Seattle is very uh, near, near in proximity. So, and it's much more expensive when you're shipping all, all the way across the countries like Seattle, Miami, and Dallas. So, that, so that's the fee, uh, first piece of information. The second piece is the actual number of units that we are shipping from place to place. So, in this case, we are shipping 50 units from Boston to Miami and um, 150 from Chicago to Dallas and uh, 100 uh, units from Oakland to Seattle and so on and so forth. So now our bottom line goal or objective is to ca calculate the total shipping cost here in cell E18. So cell E18 is uh, to uh, calculate the total sh shipping cost, which is a function of both the units shipped and the cost per unit. So one approach that you might be tempted to take is to kind of go cell by cell here and say, okay, the 50 units that, that we are shipping from Boston to Mi Miami and uh, uh, cell D13, they cost each $15 in cell D5. So uh, D5 here 15 and in the cell D13, we have 50. So we can uh, multiply these things and we and uh, that means that it is $750. If you multiply these two, 15 into 50, it will be $750 to pay for those 50 units to get from place to place. So and since we have left our reference relative, we can just drag that. So over and down. Uh, so let me. So what I will say. D13 into D5. So you can see 750. So let, let me drag this. And then so, sum up that entire range to get answer in the so 
so it is four uh, rows right so you can see the sum is twelve thousand one fifty eight dollars and that's totally fine so that's accurate but some product is going to allow us to calculate that exact same result without this intermediate step so let's go ahead and uh, delete that so uh, it is good when we have very small uh, this thing uh, but we'll see uh, how to do with the help of the uh for formula with the help of the sum product and now instead of 16 functions we are going to write one single sum product function here in cell e18 so in cell e18 i will write one single sum product function and all we are going to do is type of sum product so let me write the sum product some product of and all it needs for arguments are the arrays that we are going to multiply and then add together so i will give the first array uh, that is the co uh, column one i'll give that is uh, d5 d5 to g8 d5 to g8 this function is not giving going to be moving so i don't have to fix that reference here so in the array or matrix num number two is d13 throughout g16 and it's as simple as that so we'll close the parenthesis so give enter so you can see we got the same value this is fine when we want to just multiply the things and uh, add the pro product what if we want to multiply based on the criteria so i want to multiply based on the boston only based on the miami only at that time some product is very important it plays a very important role so we got the exact same answer here what we got in the pre previous so essentially the sum product function here is running all all of those same multiplication problems that we did those 16 individual functions and it's embedded them into its own single formula So let's see the example for the second case also. So hopefully you, you understand the you understood the simple one. So now we'll see the next that is the conditional aggregation with the sum product with the count ifs sum ifs so so right now we're getting into the really good stuff count ifs sum if average if this is where we are starting to build formulas that really open the door to let, let us create some really cool powerful dy dynamic things in excel so or in our we are looking at uh, at count if some may and uh, average if i'm go i'm going to skip this slide and uh, i will i will tell you why so let it So because each yeah, each of those functions also have a pluralized version so count ifs sum ifs and average ifs with an yes at the end the only difference is that these functions allow you to do the exact same thing but include multiple 
criteria instead of just one. And the syntax is kind of different. So rather than teaching the syntax for the singular versions, and then immediately teaching you different syntax for the pluralized version, let, let's just focus on count ifs, some ifs, and averages because you can use these versions of for the formulas even if you're just using one cr criteria. But they open the door for you to include ad additional ones if you choose. So th there is no need to learn only count if, sum if, and average if. It, it will does the same thing as these things do, but so on, only the differences, it will include more criteria more than one criteria but also you can use this context for single criteria also it is just to good enough to know that these things also exist in excel so so these are the kind of the uh, ideal ones to use i actually haven't used a singular version i don't know when i used and how, how long it has been that uh, being used of this so le let's focus on these four now and ba basically what these do is they allow you to uh, evaluate a count sum or a, a average based on a uh, multiple conditions or criteria so syntax wise count if basically consists of a combination of criteria ranges and criteria so you will see criteria range one criteria one criteria range two so you can see here this is the criteria range one and then the criteria again you can give the criteria range two and then criteria two and so on so forth and this extends for as many criteria as you want so let's say our criteria that we want to fa factor into this count is the campaign name. Uh, so, so we want to take the count where the campaign name equals Google. Where the campaign uh, in, in that case, the criteria range is going to be whichever column contains my campaign name and the criteria one criteria itself is going to be google in quotes as string and some ifs and average work the same way where just one additional piece and that's right up front so you lead with either your sum range or your average range so the sum range is the range of actual values that you want to take some of the followed by all of your criteria ranges and individual criteria so i know it's a little bit confusing at first but i promise once you read a few of these they, they will start to become really really natural so let's just kind of slowly take some time to walk through these three example uh, listed here so here we have the examples first of count diffs so so again we're just listing the criteria range followed by the criteria so my first criteria range is column B, co column B. So I'm just looking at 13 rows, that is uh, co column B, from B2 to 13 rows of data. So B2 to B13, which is different tactics, either search or display. So B2, to, we have different tactics here uh, to do, that is search or display. In, in this case, only take the count would be equal to search. So we want uh, uh, the cr uh, criteria, the B2 to B13, it should be search. And D just like uh, uh, this column is greater than 200. And D2, from D2 to D13, the va value should be greater than 200. And you are pro probably wa wondering, hey, that's a numerical filter. Why you put in quotes around it, not a string. And I wish I could tell you why that's the case. Uh, it's just the case when used greater than or less than in some if or co counted for an average if for. And it's some and cra crazy reason you have got to uh, surround it in quotes. Trust me, I tried thousand other ways, kept getting errors. Did, did you know why? And then realized this is how it works. 
अगेन अनदर वन ऑफ दो लिटिल नुएंसेस अब हमें सब सुनना Again, another one of those little nuances that you learn once and then you never forget it. So it's good to give the in double quotes. So that that's count if it returns a it re, returns a result of three because there are three instances where B equal search. Uh, I'll tell you where B equal search and click line is greater than. uh 200 so you can see count ifs it has co uh, counted whenever b2 to b13 is search and d2 to d13 is greater than 200 so greater than 200 is uh you can see b2 i understood ma'am i understood okay so some ifs now i need my sum range first member so i'm indicating or at least sum f column d so sum if column column d this is what i want to sum where co column a equals february and column b equals display so it's going to look at all the rows where both these cases are true and then take the sum of the click that is d2 to d13 it will take a this thing, column which is my sum range same exact thing with average ifs also so the average range is go going to be in d d amount uh, uh, clicks again and i want to uh, average co column d when co column a equals january and column c is equal to msn or uh, amazon uh, column c is MSN that is Amazon. So there you go. That count if some ifs and average ifs in the next lecture we are uh, going to talk about the example of these things. Putting these into practice to build our first dynamic dashboard. So get pumped. Okay. Okay. So building a basic dashboard with. count ifs average ifs and all so all right let's build our self a dashboard where where any we have bens grocery list we have jerry's grocery list this is what we have so we are also going to build in some data validation which we covered in the first section and basically the idea here is to take the raw data that we have and create that dynamic little dashboard along with a visual to kind of give you an idea of how these functions can be used as a really cool actual analytical tool So I'm the uh, so I am in the Teams Salary Dashboard tab of the section for Statistical Functions Excel Workbook, and uh, it's uh, first step. Then I'm going to do is to turn cell C two. We have the cell C two here. C two two into your data va validation cell. So I will turn C two two uh, data va validation cell, and ba basically I want it to al allow a list of all unique values for each team, and that's it. So first thing I need is that so source list to get that. I'm going to click the salary. data tab you know so this is the source list so here we have total salary and all so starting to control shift arrow down like uh, here we have team yeah here we have team so what i will do i will uh, press control shift down arrow so and then i will uh, hit uh, 
control C to copy. Then I'll come back to my team salary dashboard. So no need to go to team salary dashboard. We will go to a new tab. So here I will paste that. And here paste the data. Okay, so this is kind of just a scrap sheet without selecting it. So I'm just going to go to the data tab. So here we have the data tab. Hit the remove duplicate uh, button. So where is the duplicate? Okay, manage duplicate. Here we have. Okay, here I have remove duplicate button. So it will. Sorry, I did not uh, select the tab, the, the column only. So, so, you know, so it has uh, 4101 duplicate values are found and have been deleted. Th 33 unique values are uh, remained. So, if I scroll up. So only these are the unique values that are 33 unique values remain which are each of the individual team names okay so that's going to be the source list for my data validation drop down so let's jump back to team salary dashboard tab back to cell c to go into data validation click the data validation tab uh, place the uh, placeholder here and then data validation where is the data value here uh -huh. Okay. And then in the allowed drop down here and choose list of list and then the source section. That means in the LO, you choose list value and in the source section. So in the source and then the source section we have when we opted for list it gave us the source section and in the source section click on the picker so and choose the data as a selector they jump to sheet to select a one control so we will jump to the sheet where we have our uh, team names so i will place the placeholder here then uh, i will uh, i'll give a control i will press control shift and uh, down arrow to a33 
so you should get something like this okay okay and then press that same button uh, again the same picker you press this okay to lock it in so when you give okay so you can see you have got it drop down here so we have got a drop down list of each team so to get a drop down list you can see here we have got a drop down list you you want me to do, do this uh, again or you got to know how to create a drop down list i got to know ma'am we can continue oh. we have got a drop down list of each team now in the data uh, validation team so that's step one step two is actually po populating this array of data using counting and some formula so so for if i want for ari team i will click here to pull in co correct data based on the team and the year so as you can tell there are two criteria that we are de dealing with here which means that uh, we will see some mix and count ifs versions of the functions uh, so let's get started for total salary since we are going to be summing an actual data range we need to use some mips here so i want to start with some mips formula so So I will write some ifs. You can see as this adds the cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. So open the parenthesis and remember my first component is the sum range. So what I am taking sum of, well, this is the salary column. So I'm going to be taking the sum of salary that data lives in the salary data tab. That is, that is salary data sheet in column E. Here my data lives. So say, select that whole column. To press four and press I'm going to press four to to lock in and uh, just in case this formula moves from column to column to column i want to always calculate the salary in this case going to the comma to get my criteria so now i will place the criteria so i have two criteria that i am working with here team and year doesn't matter which order i, I go in so i could set my team criteria first then year or vice versa so in this case let's just do team first so criteria range one is the range in which my first criteria va value leaves so if i'm doing team first the, that's going to be co column b again so here we have given that uh, range some range now we have to give the criteria also so now i will give the criteria now we will give the criteria that is team going to be column b again i will lo lock it in the for shortcut so i will press f4 to lock to lock it then i will give another uh, co comma or the next piece that, that I need is the actual criteria that I'm look, looking to pull out of range. So one are looking to identify within range one and that is value that value is going to be 
found in uh, cell C2. So I will go back to the uh, team salary dashboard. So I click on this. So now you, you, you log that again with the help of F4. Means whatever team name is populated and cell C2 is going to be fed. Into this sum, this formula. So now I will give comma again. Now I am on criteria range 2. So this is the sum range this is the range one and this is the criteria now i am on criteria range two so now comes the this is the criteria range one and this is the criteria range two so my second cri criteria is the e year. So where do my year lives? It uh, lives in the salary data sheet only. So they live in salary data sheet, co column A. So I will click, I will select the entire column A. Again, for to fix it, I will press F4, then comma. To my last piece of the function, which is criteria 2. I have to mention the criteria 2. So my criteria 2 would be. So how do I know what year I care about? In this instance, if I go back to the dashboard tab, I care about the year in column B. So if I go back to my. So I want 2010. So I care about the year in co column B and in this case, it's the value and uh, from B5, from B5, because I'm de dealing with the total salary for, for 2010. Now an important point of distinction here, if I were to lock the five in completely with the four sh shortcut, close that pa parenthesis so i will press f4 to lock it i'll close that pa parenthesis and enter the formula so if i enter the formula you can see it has calculated the salary for the 2010 and the se selected team it has taken from this. So for ARI team, the total salary is this much and for the year 2010. So I'm getting the correct salary for 2010 for Arizona. If I drag this down and see, if I drag this down And see, there is the same salary every single time. The reason that's the case is because if you watch the formula itself, if you watch the formula itself, uh, uh, click down, nothing's changing. So if you click, uh, if you uh, if you click on B5, a C5, you can see this formula, and C6 also same for formula. There is nothing ch changing because every reference is completely fixed. Okay, that's almost correct, except the one thing that I do want to shift is the reference to the year name. So I will shift the reference to the year name. It's kind of tough to see here, but uh,
so what uh, here you can see i have locked the b5 so it is calculating for only b5 so and see i want the b to be fixed but i want the 5 to be uh, relative so i will re remove the do dollar sign for uh, reference 5 then i will enter One second. Let me remove five here. So now you can see the salary has changed. So when you click on down sell, you can see this thing has been shifted to six. You can see it is changing to seven. You can see it is changing to eight and nine. So you can make it unlock. So now if I play this down, I will update properly. So you can see the dashboard has also been changed. So, the, so the, that's my total salary column for the number of players in this case. We don't want to sum any values. We just want to take a count of the number of players and uh, under these sum two criteria team and year. So we'll see the players column now. So I'm just going to do equals count tips. So count tips. So range one, which is team. So we, where do my teams live? Sa salary data, column B. Fix it with the help of F4. So what's my criteria? So for criteria, I will come back to my dashboard. And I will give comma here. Then I will specify the criteria. Then I will fix it with the help of F4. And for cri criteria 2 is the year. So again, uh, the range I have to give range 2. Again, I'll come back to salary data. And I will give year. I have to specify. First, I have to give comma year. Then I will uh, lock it with the help of F4. Then I have the range 2. Now I have, I have to give criteria 2. That is, it lives in the B. Four, I guess. Okay, B five. Oh my God! Range of the gifts from salary data. Four, comma, then team dashboard criteria two. Yes. This B five. It is not allowing me to. the criteria I will give but mm, 
Mm -hmm. understanding no i have give, i have to give the range to so i will go back to salary data range to four and then comma then week five we have four but we will not fix the why it is happening like this We have got the 26 players for the Arizona team in the year 2010. If I, if I were to drag, drag, you can see the same because we have not. So you can see B6, B7, B8. You can see the players count tips has worked here. Yeah. So now is the average salary. So what I'm going to do since I have the total salary and I have the number of players, the simple route and just simple di di uh, division here. So you know it takes you five divided by the number. That is c5 what is the average salary means c5 divided by d5 c5 divided by d5 so this is the average salary So this is the average salary per player. So this is how you will calculate. Okay. So if you have any doubts regarding this, you can ask me. Uh, I understood, but this is a bit complicated. Like I have to practice a lot so that yes. I'll get. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, Yogita. Shall we wind up here? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs>